How do I correct my dog the right way? Welcome to Cornerstone Gun Dog Academy, where you can learn to train your retriever with our online videos. So if you want to correct your dog, you need to understand a few things, especially if you want that correction to be successful and effective for your dog. So really the three things you wanna understand is why we correct our dog, when to correct our dog, and how to correct our dog. So when it comes to why we correct our dog, it's really for a very specific purpose. We wanna help improve our dog and help them become better. We want to help them improve from doing what they're not supposed to do and we want them to have a behavior change and do what they are supposed to do. So it's very simple and there's a very specific reason on why we correct our dog. The next thing is when to correct our dog and this is so important. This is one of the most important keys here is you've got to have a great timing for your correction otherwise your correction is not going to to work and not be effective. I was talking to a friend the other day and he was training his dog and it decided to get up and run off randomly in the middle of the training. And then it finally came back and he was frustrated and corrected his dog as it came back. So the timing of his correction was slightly off. And here's the reason why. Dogs think differently than we do for the most part. You know, if you think back to you and me, maybe when we were younger and got in trouble, you know, our parents would explain to us, hey, this is why you're getting in trouble. And then you get disciplined. Well, the dog, can't think like that. They can't reason that way. And they're more focused and intent on what's happening at that specific point in time. For example, he, he was correcting his dog for running off, but the dog was thinking, hey, I'm coming back to my owner. So in the dog's perspective, it was being corrected for coming back to the owner. So you actually need to slow down, think like your dog, make sure that you're understanding what's going through your dog's mind at the time. And your correction needs to be immediate. It needs to be at the time that they're actually doing something wrong. If they get out of range or they you're not in a place to where you can correct them, then don't correct. Shorten the drill, simplify, and then get Fetch. success. But make sure your timing whoa, whoa, whoa. is at the exact moment Fetch. that they're doing Good. the wrong thing. That way it can be effective. And then finally, how to correct our dog. Now there's actually a few different forms of correction or pressure that you can utilize to correct your dog. There's spatial pressure or spatial correction. And this is where you basically just use space, whether it's your body or another object to basically put a little pressure on their dog. For example, if you're teaching your dog to heal and their rear end is kicking out then you can walk along a fence and then that spatial pressure of the fence is going to push their rear end and rear end actually push it into you. And then if you keep continuing to heal, then you're going to condition your dog to heal the way you want them to. That's one example of spatial pressure. Or another example is if your dog is standing up, but you want them to sit down when you've told them to get on place or whatnot, just lean in a bit and the spatial pressure of your body is just going to kind of slowly push them in. That is spatial pressure. You've got verbal pressure or verbal correction. This is where you're actually using your voice tones and inflection to no. indicate or communicate to your dog Here. that you're dissatisfied with what is going on. That can be a simple no, an at, at, or basically just a different change in tone, which tells the dog that's not what we're looking for. And then finally, you've got physical correction or physical, physical pressure. This is where you actually physically apply pressure in different forms, whether you're doing a tug on the lead, or whether you're using a nick for an e-collar or whether you're getting into your dog's face a bit and just grabbing a hold of their scruff and saying no and then positioning that putting them back where they are supposed to go so there's a few different ways that you can apply all of these corrections or pressures and ultimately you're going to have to base it on your dog every dog is going to be different so some dogs are going to be able to handle certain pressures better than others so the cool thing is you've got to get on the same page with your dog and ultimately i gotta say the foundation for this is respect respect your dog learn to read your dog and take your time as you apply these corrections. And if your dog indicates that they're starting to shut down, as in some of your corrections too much, you know then you need to back off and keep building the bond with your dog. The last thing I wanna leave you with is what I call the trust bank. Every interaction you have with your dog is an opportunity to build trust or it's an opportunity to take away trust. It's kind of like a bank. You can either deposit or you can withdraw and you wanna deposit as much as you can so that it keeps growing. So you've gotta make sure that you and your dog, every interaction, set it up to where Good you girl. deposit trust with you and your dog. If you do all of this, your corrections are gonna be effective and your dog's behavior will start improving dramatically.